I have no idea how well this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. My paper's getting wet now. Where I'm going to try to preserve some whites. I'm going to take my paper towel. Doesn't that sound lovely? And I'm going to dry some of the tops of the rocks and where the trees are that I want to have stay white. Tops of that rock. Here and where the um, waterfall is coming over. So we're going to dry those spots a little bit. Take my brush and I'm going to mix in my cobalt blue, a little cerulean, a little bit of French Ultra. I'm going to take a touch of alizarin crimson, so it's going to turn nice and purple for me. Come back in here to the cerulean, pull it out. Now there's, I've just wet my brush in my water. I'm not going to dip back into it because I'm going to come up here in this section, which is the sky. I'm going to paint around the body of the tree, that negative painting thing. You're going to hear tap, tap, tap. That's going to be my brush against the paper and this hollow um, There's my dog barking. This hollow board that I use. I'm going to wash my brush real quick and I'm going to dry it on this towel that I've got. And I'm going to pull this on down a little bit. And on the other side of this tree here. So that's pretty much my sky for now. If I want it to be a little more diffused with the white that that is, I can come in here and fluff it up a little bit. I've got a little bit of a lump in my paper, which is not typical. Of course, since I'm doing a demo, it's going to do that for me. But I'm just going to fluff that in there. Good, you've got some sky now. We're going to reach into the yellow, into that same blue that I mixed, and this time I'm going to take it into the purple, actually, because I would like to have it be a little bit grayer. And I'm going to put back here in the distance. Some fir trees. Gonna blue it up a little bit more. Still haven't reached back in my water, if you'll notice. Don't want to get back in my water because my water is just going to dilute this paint. And I want this paint to be just as thick and juicy as it can be. It's going to do a much better job for me if I let it do that. I'm a little bit annoyed with this right here, so I'm just going to put some water underneath it right there. That should hold it down. Ta da! And all else fails. People ask me after you've painted, can you re-wet this? Well, you can in spaces, but you can't get back to this. This is this is the optimal time to paint and allow your pigments to diffuse the way you want them to. I'm gonna pull some blue here out of here. Go back into this blue. Still have it going back into my water. Come in here. I want this to be kind of pale. Back in the background, another tree. I'm going to take it on off the page. Make sure you understand it's back the way back there in the background. Let's wash the brush this time. Dry the brush. Dry the brush. Come in here in this blue that was the sky. And let's go ahead and make some trees that are the same, almost the same color as the sky back here. Just to lead you around in here. In here, got a nice friendly hair off of a brush right there. It wanted to go swimming apparently. Let's put some more yellow in here. This is uh, Aurelian, and I'm gonna put some new gamboge in there too. Ugh, I got way too much water going there. When that happens, <clears throat> when you get way too much water, there's a couple ways you can deal with it. You can. Just mop it off the top of your palette and get rid of it totally. Or you can take your brush and dry it right here against the barrel, which is what holds the hair in the brush, and it allows the water to go in, but you keep pigment on your brush where you want it. Now I'm going to come over here. This is, I don't know what's going on back here, so I'm just going to 
put some stuff in. Put a little bit of red in it. Let's gray that down a bit. It's getting a little bit too funky on me. Want it nice and dark. Put it there. Maybe too dark. If it is, I'll show you what we can do. Let's leave a space here. So there's some bushes that are growing here, so let's leave a space for it. Since I'm thinking that may be a little bit too dark, while it's still good and wet, let's just go ahead and lift it. Lift it out. Lift it, lift it. That way that brings it back to the value that it ought to be. Up here in the foreground, behind this tree here, there is a much darker fir tree. So I'm make sure I've got my good dark, my red in there. And let's go ahead and put that big old fir tree in here. I kind of feel like Bob Ross when I'm talking. I don't mean to. I think I'm channeling him. It's, um, you know, all of us were so in awe of his happy little paintings. Changing the tones just a little bit. I've gone put a little bit more. French altar, and you'll see me reach back over here and put paint in because I'm kind of like driving with the clutch out right now. Um, I'm used to painting the way I paint, and so sometimes I may not tell you exactly what's going on. Just put some uh, burnt sienna in there. Let's make sure that this is real good and dry around these rocks because I'm going to come down to the top of the rocks and go ahead and do some negative painting around the top of them so that they're going to show up as light and splash with water when the time comes. Okay, and over here, let's just get this in here. Don't want to mess around too much. There we go. I'm going to wash my brush again. Come back in here to some, maybe let's do some lighter green, some springier green. Come here. Pull that on down, down here to where the water is coming around that bend, around this rock. And then in this area, there are some, there's some foliage that has hit the light, so I want to make sure that there's some good light coming there. Let's put a little bit of uh, uh, leaf ambrosia and some burnt sienna.